Welcome back to our lecture series on advanced hydraulics. In last class, we started the module 4 on hydraulic jumps, if you recall them. So, especially in the last class, we introduced to you the concepts on rapidly varied flow. What are the different types of rapidly varied flow? We also discussed on what is the difference between rapidly varied flow, uniform flow and gradually varied flow. For example, in uniform flow and gradually varied flow, you were able to take the parallel flow assumption, whereas in rapidly varied flow, it is not possible and you have also seen that the streamlines have quite a good curvature. You were also introduced to you, uh, you were also introduced on hydraulic jumps. We also go, uh, gone through in which all locations or in which all situations hydraulic jumps are formed. Today, as we discussed in the last class, we will go through the theoretical aspects on the hydraulic jumps some of the theoretical aspects that are required, uh, some of the fundamental principles, how you can employ them even for analyzing hydraulic jumps, this we will see them. So, just recalling back hydraulic jumps mean it is a type of rapidly varying flow that occurs in open channels or the definition it was given like that when a supercritical flow meets a subcritical flow, this causes a jump in elevation of water surface and is called hydraulic jump. So, throughout our open channel hydraulics course, we have used the control volume or continuum approach. for analyzing the fluid flow in open channels. So, the same approach will be again maintained here for analyzing the hydraulic jump as well. Uh, what was the, what was the fundamental principle for any phenomenon, what was the fundamental principle you used in control volume approach? If you recall then, for any control volume, we have suggested that the Reynolds transport theorem, Reynolds transport theorem can be used for analyzing any extensive property in a control volume. If we are taking uh, the hydraulic jump as a control volume, the entire jump portion, if you are taking it as a part of the control volume and if you are trying to analyze them, the same Reynolds transport theorem should hold good while analyzing the flow phenomenon in hydraulic jump. So, what was the Reynolds transport theorem? If you recall the, the material derivative of any extensive property B this is equal to the rate of change of that extensive property stored inside the control volume plus the net outflux of this extensive property across the control surfaces of the control volume. So, if you have a cubical shape as a control volume, you know that it has now 6 surfaces that is uh, forming this control volume, 6 surfaces are there. So, what, what is the net outflux from these surfaces that is being given by this particular term? The change in the extensive property, the rate of change of extensive property, extensive property stored inside this control volume that is given as the first term in the Reynolds transport equation, if you recall them. So, we have seen that the sum of the extensive properties are mass, momentum, force, etcetera and all. Similarly, again we are going to use the Reynolds transport theorem for analyzing hydraulic jump. So, just let me write it again d by d b by d t is equal to do by do t of 
the first term is the rate of change of extensive property stored inside the control volume plus the second term is the net outflux of this extensive property through the control surfaces. You know B is equal to the extensive property beta was called as the intensive property right. Now, what happens if you are taking say conservation of mass if you are taking uh, the conservation of mass property then the extensive property B becomes the mass of the liquid, then you can see that say the hydraulic germ say in this hydraulic germ if I am going to consider this um, if I am going to consider the control volume in the following form. say this control volume is now enclosing the hydraulic jump. So, in our open channel flow predominantly we consider the flow as a one dimensional in the flow direction right. So, therefore, this particular control volume is having only two surfaces which allows flow through it that is on the left side and on the right side. So, that phenomenon we will be taking, in, uh, taking into care here. So, when the in the Reynolds transport theorem if you have taken the extensive property B as a mass then I hope you remember the intensive property beta is 1 then subsequently the conservation of mass equation as per the Reynolds transport theorem was given as 0 means the net change the rate of change of the extensive property that will be 0 mass can neither be created nor destroyed right. So, based on that same principle now you will be getting rho d u plus control surface rho v dot n d a right. So, this equation now we have to apply it for the following control volume. How we are going to? What is the first term? The first term do by do t of control volume rho d u as inside the control volume you have that control volume now inside that control volume you you may see that here inside this control volume you are not adding further water or you are not uh, detecting amount of certain water within this control volume. So, therefore, the first term will be 0. So, it becomes a 0 quantity. Therefore, your control volume equation Reynolds transport equation becomes for the conservation of mass becomes rho v dot n d a is equal to 0 that is the net outflux of mass through the control surfaces of uh, the hydraulic gem that will be 0 that is the meaning of this particular term that is the net mass outflux through the control surfaces of the volume is equal to 0 that is the meaning of the entire equation now. So, as we mentioned earlier there are only two control surfaces that allow flow through the uh, control volume. So, which are they? So, we have in the pre jump section or the upstream section that is the pre jump section or the upstream section of the jump. 
So, again just for your benefit, I am just drawing the hydraulic jam. It shows that. So, your control volume is like this. So, on the left hand side, the section will be may be in this form. So, the depth of flow, let me give this as y 1, the area of flow is a 1, right. And on the right hand side, this control volume, this surface allows flow and as you know, the depth of flow increases in the downstream section. So, we are suggesting a higher elevation and it is being given as y 2, fine and the area of cross section is given as a 2. So, uh, what does this equation mean then? Therefore, your equation rho v dot n d a, this integration is equal to 0. It is nothing but you have now two sections uh, left hand side and right hand side. So, what is the net outflux to these two surfaces that you have to combine now. So, as we know that we used to take the average velocities in the sections. So, this average velocity into area can be combined for this entire integral term. You know, uh, as in the left hand side the outward normal is opposite to the flow velocity direction. Therefore, this is a negative quantity. So, I can write this quantity now rho v 1 bar a 1 plus rho v 2 bar a 2 is equal to 0. That is v 1 bar a 1 is equal to v 2 bar a 2, this is equal to discharge q. This assumption based on the incompressible flow assumption, the density of the liquid is not changing. In due based on that assumption, we are able to write it in the following form. So, we uh, you are getting a constant discharge, that is the discharge on the down uh, upstream side of the gem as well as on the downstream side of the gem, both are same, both are having same discharge. Here also it is q, here also it is q, that is the meaning of this equation. So, from the conservation of mass equation, you are now getting the following relationship. So, what happened? I mean applying the momentum principle. So, if you apply the momentum principle to the control volume, same control volume if you apply the momentum principle, you know that the extensive property B is now equal to mass into velocity, right. Therefore, the intensive property is taken as V. Again, the Reynolds transport theorem, the material derivative of B that is m v, this is nothing but equal to dou by dou t of volumetric integral v rho d u plus the surface integral that gives you the net momentum flux that passes through the control surfaces of the control volume. So, this is the first term shows the rate of change of momentum stored inside the control volume, right. And this term shows the net outflux of momentum
net outflux of momentum across the control surfaces of the volume. So, again let me suggest to you, you are not adding any momentum inside the control volume or you are not detecting any momentum from the control volume. Inside the control volume, you are neither adding it or detecting. So, we can uh, avoid the first term that is we can suggest the first term as 0 dou by dou t of because we are not adding or deducting momentum inside the control volume. Okay. So, inside the control volume we are not neither adding or detecting it. So, that first term will be 0. So, this means that your momentum equation now becomes d by d t of m v is equal to the net outflux of momentum through the control surfaces of the control volume. Fine. What is this quantity? The material derivative of momentum that means, the rate of change of momentum in the control volume that is that will give you the net force acting in the control volume. This gives you the net force sigma f and the second term. So, I can write this entire quantity as sigma f is now equal to v rho v dot n d a. Right. So, you have now two uh, surfaces, right? Again, only two surfaces allow the momentum flux to pass through it. So, you have the upstream section where the flow depth of water is like this, you have the downstream section where the depth of flow may be considered at a higher elevation compared to the first one and you have the jump occurring in the channel. So, there is a jump, okay. it is it may not be a realistic figure which we have drawn here. So, I can just draw it very close this entire section now the upstream. So, the jump between that between that short reach, it can be given here. Here the area is A 2, here the area is A 1, V 1 is the velocity here, V 2 means we are averaging it. I hope you remember that V 1 bar, V 2 bar. The discharge is same in both the sections. So, the net momentum outflux through the control surfaces, this can be given as here the outward normal vector is in this direction of that surface, whereas here it is in this direction of the flow itself. Therefore, the left hand quantity will be a negative quantity. So, I can write this now as rho into V 1 bar square A 1 plus rho into v 2 v 1 uh, v 2 bar square a 2. So, this will give you the momentum equation that is sigma f is equal to rho into v 2 square a 2 minus v 1 square a 1. 
like this I can easily write the quantity now. What are the various forces acting? What are the various forces acting in the control volume for the hydraulic jump? For your benefit, I am again repeatedly drawing the same figure. So, the control volume. like this. So, you have a pressure force on this surface acting in the flow direction F p 1, we can give it as F p 1. You have pressure, pressure force in this direction opposite to the flow direction here on the right control surface, right. All other uh, forces on the control surfaces, they are all other pressure forces, they are neglect uh, means they are gets cancelled off because there is no flow occurring, right. So, these two here uh, will be remaining there. You have the friction force F f acting in the opposite direction of the flow. You have the weight of liquid acting down perpendicularly down, right. Let us assume that the slope is theta, then this weight will be having component W sin theta. Right. So, the net forces acting in the control volume, this can be given as F p 1 minus F p 2 minus F f that is friction force plus W sin theta. So, like this you can write the left hand side of the T equation. So, the net force will be given in the following form as per our hydraulic jump definition or as per rapidly varying flow assumption. You can neglect because of the short reach frictional forces, you can neglect frictional forces and gravitational forces in the flow direction. Please note that frictional forces and gravitational forces in the flow direction, we can neglect them. Therefore, your sigma f becomes f p 1 minus f p 2. I hope you recall what are the pressure forces, how you compute them the pressure forces, you have now two cross sections, the pre jump cross section with lower elevation, depth of flow is y 1, fine, the depth of flow is y 1 here. You have the post jump section, where the depth of flow is higher, we are giving this as y 2. So, this area of cross section here it is A 1, here it is A 2. Now, if you recall that, if you observe for this particular area A 1, if from the top of the water surface, if H 1 bar is the height to the centroid of this area. Similarly, if H 2 bar is the height or distance from the water surface to the centroid. Then you can use the following relationship that is the pressure force is equal to what is pressure force equal to? Yes, that is pressure at the centroid. into area of the plane. This we had clearly explained it or we have done it many times. So, again we are reiterating same thing we are following them. So, therefore, F p 1 I can write this as the pressure there is rho g h 1 bar now into a 1. Similarly, F p 2 
this will be equal to rho g h 2 bar is the um, distance to the centroid from the water surface there in the second section or in the post jump section and a 2 is the area of cross section at the post jump section. So, you have sigma f is equal to rho g times h 1 bar a 1 minus h 2 bar a 2. Okay. So, you combine both the equations this rho g, this expression as well as the previous expression sigma f is equal to rho times v 2 squared a 2 minus v 1 squared a 1. So, combine them both of them you will get rho g h 1 bar by a 1 h 2 bar a 2 this is equal to rho times v 2 squared a 2 minus v 1 squared a 1. So, rearrange the terms rho rho will get cancelled off g you can take it to the uh, denominator here you also from your continuity equation relationship v 1 bar is nothing but equal to q by a 1 v 2 bar is equal to q by a 2. So, you use substitute these terms also here now in the terms. So, I can write the thing quantities now g times h 1 bar a 1 minus h 2 bar a 2 this is equal to q squared 1 by a 2 minus 1 by a 1 or you will get a 1 h 1 bar plus q square g a 1 is equal to a 2 h 2 bar plus q square g a 2. So, this like this expression you will get relationship you can say relationship you will get I can just box it for your benefit. Can you tell me what are the terms this is nothing but I can say some quantity in section 1 and some quantity in section 2 they are same that is being specified. Recall our first module especially the lecture 7 and lecture 8 where we had given you the concepts on specific force right. In the first module we had described you what is meant by specific force and all. So, specific force was def, uh, defined as F s is equal to q squared by g a plus h bar a at any given section the specific force can be computed using this relationship right. So, this is the first term is the momentum of flow passing through the channel section per unit time per unit weight of the water. Second quantity that also we had described at that time it is force per unit weight of water right. So, these uh, quantities if you analyze it you will see that from the momentum equation for the hydraulic gem you are getting that at section 1 and section 2 at section 1 and section 2 of the hydraulic gem you are having the same specific forces right. So, the specific force is same at the down upstream section and at the downstream section of the hydraulic jam. So, that is the peculiarity or that is the principle now from which we are going to analyze the hydraulic jam that is the most important principle here for analyzing the hydraulic jam that is the specific forces on the upstream as well as on the downstream they are same. So, if you recall that at that time also we had mentioned that the specific forces between two adjacent cross sections they will be same for such steady flow conditions and all. And also for any given cross section for any given cross section 
if you have a depth of flow, one can easily draw the corresponding specific force versus depth of flow for any given section, right. I hope you recall them. So, you were getting a curve of this particular nature. like this fine. So, same thing now at this case here is the depth of flow. So, this can be given as y y 1 uh, y 1 f. Now, for the same depth you know this is the specific force here this is the for that same specific force you have another depth of flow also y 2 f. And we have suggested that y 1 f and y 2 f are having same specific force. So, that is for a given section you can have two depths that can have same specific force. So, these two depths are called sequent depths that also we had described at that time. So, what we want to suggest here is that as the hydraulic jump in the uh, in the hydraulic jump the pre jump and the post jump sections they are having the same specific forces. The elevation there in the downstream and the upstream sections they are now sequent depths. So, if you can compute the sequent depths at any uh, elevation any cross section your height after the jump that can easily be computed right. Just let us just go through the situation where you have jump in a horizontal rectangular channel. So, you have uh, a horizontal rectangular channel, a horizontal rectangular channel, a jump occurs on that and you want to analyze. How will you use the same theory? Here the section is like this. depth of flow here the section is like this depth of flow fine. So, let us assume the width of the rectangular channel is b. So, in the upstream section you have depth y 1 at the downstream section you have depth y 2 in the rectangular channel. So, that is this is pre jump section, this is post jump section, you are taking the portions like this within this region, within this region you are taking the portion now, the two sections. So, what are the how will you analyze now using the same specific force criteria specific force on the upstream side as well as on the downstream side both should be same. So, what can you do means how you can further simplify for a horizontal rectangular channel section. This is a simple mathematical rearrangement the things you know uh, okay, just for uh, this thing I can suggest that a 1 that is in the upstream section A 1 is equal to B into Y 1, A 2 is equal to B into Y 2. Also the distance to the centroid from the water surface in a rectangular channel it is nothing but half of the depth of flow. So, H 1 bar is equal to Y 1 by 2. Similarly, 
h 2 bar is equal to y 2 by 2. If you have all these quantities, then you can easily write specific force. Now, specific force F s this is equal to B y 1 square by 2 plus q squared by g b y 1. This will be same for the downstream section b y 2 squared by 2 plus q squared by g b y 2. So, the sum of the there are some quantities. Now, you can rearrange the things that is the objective here is I want to find a relation between the sequent depths. You have the sequent depths y 2 and y 1 for the rectangular channel hydraulic jump in a rectangular channel you have the sequent depths y 1 and y 2. How can you find a relation for them? That is our objective here. How I can just do it now in the following hand rearrange the things quantities here. Now, just recall the fruit number. we have written fluid number f r this is equal to inertial forces ratio of inertial forces by gravitational forces right so in our module 1 we had explained these quantities for the rectangle uh, for the open channels we have given this as v by root of g y am i right now, for rectangular channels, for rectangular channels, I can write f r squared is equal to v bar squared by g y. This is nothing but you know v is equal to q by a. So, q squared by g v square y cube for rectangular channels the fruit square of the fruit number will be in the following form. Therefore, in the specific force equation specific force equation I can write b y 1 square by 2 plus just recall it this is the specific force equation. So, this these are the specific force quantities right. So, q squared by g b y 1. So, q squared by g b y 1 that quantity will be equal to f r squared into yes b y b y square right. So, the same thing I will be just substituting it here. So, I will just put the pen now. f r 1 square b times y 1 square. So, on the right hand side also similarly I can write plus f r 2 square b y 2 square that is b is getting cancelled off in all the both left hand side as well as the right hand side. So, I will get y 1 squared into half of f r 1 square this is equal to y 2 squared into half of f r 2 square. It is a good relationship right or you can suggest y 2 by y 1 one relationship is between the sequent depths of the channel is y 2 by y 1 whole squared is nothing but equal to half of f r 1 square
plus half of plus uh, sorry divided by half plus f r 2 square like this you can easily get one relationship. Uh, to get the fluid number of both usually you have or you you may be evaluating fluid number at the upstream section and your objective is based on the upstream section condition what could be the elevation after the hydraulic jump and all that is your objective. Now, you are required to have the fluid numbers at the upstream as well as downstream section that may be difficult or that is not prudent. So, what we have to do is that you use the continuity equation you have continuity equation v 1 bar a 1 is equal to v 2 a 2. So, from this for the rectangular channel we will get v 1 b y 1 is equal to v 2 b y 2 or v 1 bar by v 2 bar is equal to y 2 by y 1. If you have this relationship now, you just incorporate it. What is student number? Fruit number f r 1 square is equal to v 1 square by g y 1, right. Similarly, f r 2 square is equal to v 2 square by g y 2. So, you employ this particular relationship here, we will get f r 2 square by f r 1 square is equal to, I will just write the final form, I hope you know how to write it y 1 by y 2 whole q, just I substituted say v 1 by v 2 is equal to y 2 by y 1 that relationship I just incorporated it here and I am getting the expression y 1 by y 2 whole q f r 2 by f r 1 whole square is equal to y 1 by y 2 whole q or I can write f r 2 square is equal to f r 1 square into y 1 by y 2 whole q right. Therefore, in the specific force equation now, specific force equation for the rectangular channel, I will get an expression y 2 by y 1 whole square is equal to half plus f r 1 square divided by half plus f f r 2 square is nothing but f r 1 square into y 1 by y 2 whole q or just take 2 means unnecessarily putting it half here. I can rearrange the quantity now. This can be rewritten as 1 plus 2 y f r 1 square divided by 1 plus 2 y f r 1 square this particular quantity divided by y 2 by y 1 whole q right. So, what is the property here? If you just look into this equation y 2 by y 1 whole q this is the ratio the second death the ratios y 2 by y 1 whole q this is equal to a certain quantity I am getting. So, this is an implicit expression it is an implicit expression in the sequent depth ratio y 2 by y 1. So, if you know the ratio or if you want to find this sequent depth ratio as this is an implicit quantity you have to either use the iterative technique or you have to use trial and error method there are various procedure. Also from age old means more, more than 60, 70 years itself many scientists have given approximate relationship especially for the rectangular channels that is for the hydraulic jumps in 
uh, rectangular channels, scientists have given approximate relationship for this sequence depth ratio. For example, as given in Srivastava's uh, book in open channel hydraulics, scientist Hagen, scientist Hagen in 1992, he has given an expression approximate expression has suggested an approximate expression for sequent depth ratio y 2 by y 1. He suggested that y 2 by y 1 for rectangular channels can be written as root of 2 into f r 1 minus 0 0.5 and this is valid only for cases where f r 1 is greater than 2.5. So, Hagen has given such an approximation. Many scientists have given different type of approximation. Even in Venti Chow's book on open channel hydraulics, you will find a very good approximation for rectangular channels. So, in Charles books in 1959, it gives the approximate relationship of the sequent depth ratio, the sequent depth ratio for rectangular channels y 2 by y 1 can be given as half times 1 plus uh, root of 1 plus 8 times f r 1 square minus 1. Like this one relationship is given, this is the main relationship here. So, it suggests that hydraulic jump will form if this equation is satisfied between two section, sections between two sections in the rectangular channel, sequent depth ratio, if the sequent depth ratio is being seen in this particular form, sorry, then hydraulic jump will be formed. So, from the same uh, US types of jumps, we will just uh, quickly cover on what are the types of jumps available. This is given by US Bureau of Reclamation Studies. In 1955. So, from their studies, it has been observed that. So, you know that the upstream, upstream fluid number that is an important parameter. So, for FR1 equal to 1, if it is a critical flow, no jump will be formed. If the upstream fluid number ranges between 1 to 1.7, you will get hydraulic jumps of the following form that is undular jump. Such jumps are called undular jumps. If the fluid number is between 1.7 and 2.5, you will see that the downstream section, the water surface is still smooth. Although the jump has occurred, smooth water surface is there. Such jumps are called weak jumps. Now, the next I can suggest here is, if your fruit number is between 2.5 and upstream fruit number is between 2.5 and 4.5. 
you can suggest this quantity now as say oscillations are being formed in the upstream downstream section several oscillations are formed this jump is called oscillating jump so each oscillation causes waves in the downstream section and that waves can pass on for several kilometers in the can canal also so such oscillations are formed you have if your fruit number is between 4.5 and 9 then you will see that after the jump is formed the undulations are there but it is almost in a steady state steady conditions so the same discontinuity is maintained it is not like an oscillating form so it is called steady jump so the same discontinuity it is maintained with respect to time throughout so this is a very efficient type of jump such type of jumps or steady jumps are very efficient it can dissipate almost 45 to 70 percentage of energy it can dissipate fine and this is a well balanced jump similarly finally we can just give that for any fruit number in the upstream section greater than 9n you have a very rough type of jump that is water will be gushing into that the upstream water in a supercritical with a high velocity this gushing in it forms jumps then goes on the undulations are also very uh, peculiar here it is called strong jump it will mixes with all type of very uh, all type of mixing occurs in such type of strong jumps so, means there there are no water pockets where stagnant water is present or like that that situation will not arise in such type of jumps it is called strong jump almost 85 percentage of energy is released in such type of jump so with that type uh, we have discussed now the types of jumps also we will continue this portion in the next class Uh, so to today's quiz, the first question: What is the continuity equation for a hydraulic jump? Just write the continuity equation for a hydraulic jump. It will take hardly thirty seconds for you. Now the second question: This little bit lengthy. The question is lengthy, but the solution is very simple. Which are the forces present? and as well as the forces neglected in the control volume enclosing a hydraulic jump when you use the momentum equation you have seen the derivation today so which are the forces that are included and which are the forces that are neglected now the final expression of the momentum equation for the hydraulic jump it yields a certain quantity that you have already studied in module 1 and the what is that quantity name what is name that quantity and write its expression very simple question the third question the hydraulic jump is classified into five types according to the us bureau of reclamation list the types of hydraulic jumps you only give the names no need to write the fluid, uh, fluid number criteria and all just give you give the names so the solutions for the today's quiz what is the continuity equation for a hydraulic jump as described in many of the courses or subject same thing between two sections it will be having the same discharge this is the continuity equation we had in fact derived this in our class today in the second question which are the forces present and neglected in the control volume for the hydraulic jump you have the hydraulic jump so in the control volume what are the forces you are incorporating and what are the forces you have neglected right so the weight component in the direction of flow in the direction of flow w sin theta as well as the frictional forces wff 
they are neglected in the hydraulic jam. The pressure forces F P 1 and F P 2 they are accepted right for the momentum in the momentum equation we have incorporated these two forces or these two forces are accepted. Next part of that question the final expression of the momentum equation for a hydraulic jam yields a certain quantity. What is that quantity? Do I need to explain it? It is called specific force. We suggested that the specific force at the upstream as well as the downstream section they are same. The expression for specific force, how did we uh, express specific force? We suggested that A 1 H 1 bar plus Q squared by G A 1 is equal to A 2 H 2 bar plus Q squared by G A 2. The hydraulic jump we have classified into 5 types according to the US Bureau of Recognition. List the types. What are the types of hydraulic jump? You can just suggest them. If you want, I can just briefly write them. You have weak jump, you have oscillating jump, then you have steady jump, you have strong jump, right. Also, you have undular jumps. So, these are the five classifications for the jumps. So, that way we are concluding today's class. We will continue with the same module in the next class. Thank you.